Check this out. I'm charging my phone without any wires or a battery pack. And this gaming controller never needs to be plugged in. Imagine never having to plug in any of this because of this thing. This is the transmitter, and that's where the power's coming from. So why aren't we charging everything through the air? And how can this be safe? I'll explain. Companies offering air charging generally pick one of three ways to remotely power your device. Radio waves, microwaves, or infrared light. The specific tech powering these gadgets comes from Israeli tech company YCharge, which uses infrared light. We have a transmitter which is like an inner solar that delivers an invisible infrared beam and the receiver converts the infrared beam back into electricity. There's no battery in this. So if I remove the paper, it'll just go eventually. And, yep. And we're not doing Lego train as a product. This is the right. coolest way that we found to demonstrate over the air charging. Why infrared specifically? When you actually want to deliver meaningful power over meaningful distance with small receiver that can fit inside every consumer electronic device, you have to use infrared. It's similar to the infrared used in TV remote controls, but TV remotes send the signal in many directions, which is good for simple, low power data communication. Y charge beams the signal directionally in a straight line to the device and follows it, allowing power to be transferred. It's a slow process though, or he says phones would charge much slower over the air compared to wall plug charging. Which isn't so bad since battery experts say that batteries have a longer lifespan when you charge them slowly. And slow charging doesn't matter as much if you're continuously getting juiced and aren't held back by a power cord. This concept isn't new. It's been more than a century since Nikola Tesla wowed crowds by powering electric lamps at a distance. Where are the wires? Exactly. But doing that safely inside people's homes, that took some time. Since we can now make things operate at much higher frequencies, we can make the gadgets that transmit this energy smaller. So it's now small enough to fit in a cell phone or an iPad or a laptop for even higher powers. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. How can this be safe? Am I gonna grow another head or something? The general limit these days, it is about one watt of power. So it's, it's just very small. A standard light bulb is 60 watts, so it's even less than that. Experts tell me that wireless power transfer is generally safe, as long as companies adhere to frequency and power output guidelines set by the FCC, FDA, and others. YCharge says the FDA's criteria ensures the devices don't cause radiation issues or interference with nearby devices. The FDA approval means it needs to be safe enough for a small kid to take it, put it in, in front of his eye or something else, and still it needs to be safe under all conditions. So why don't we have it in our homes yet? For a long time, no one really needed it. But today, data shows that on average, consumers have more than 20 connected devices at home. With more smartphones and smart gadgets, there's more of a financial incentive for companies to make juicing up easier. Samsung has a new remote that sips on Wi-Fi signals, solar power, and ambient light to charge itself over the air. And startups have ideas too. The Washington State-based firm Asia made this product that could turn a regular AA battery into an air chargeable one. And the California-based startup Energis says it can power digital price tags at stores over the air. A couple of things still need to happen though before devices like this go mainstream. First, wireless power companies need to keep growing their customer base. Right now, air charging devices are most often found in warehouses and businesses, which have the scale and more immediate need for the tech. As more buy-in, startups theoretically have more money to invest in advancing the technology further and bring costs down over time. Ultimately, for widespread consumer adoption, you really need big-name companies like Apple and Samsung to support it. Then manufacturers would need to incorporate over-the-air charging capabilities into devices. Think TVs, laptops, and other household gadgets. That involves modifying internal parts to support a new way of receiving power. That's an expensive undertaking that alone could take years. And most importantly, consumers must be interested in the tech for it to show up in more stuff. Even though over-the-air power is way slower than plugging your phone in like this, I'd rather have my devices trickle-charged all day than deal with these. And who actually wants to have to remember to charge their toothbrush? Not me.